Hello, it's Olga. Welcome to Morphology. And hello from me. My name is Ahmed and apparently I'm a plasma cell. Welcome to Morphology. Hi everyone. Uh, so today we are very happy to have Dr. Guy Hanna, who is a hematologist and a morphologist at King's College Hospital. And we are going to talk about some very useful presentations that um, we have to know uh, as specialty registrars when we start working. Welcome, Guy. OK, uh, thanks, Olga. And hopefully you're going to help me with uh, some of these cases as well. Um, so and what we have here is a section of a blood film. Um, you can see here, I haven't scanned the whole thing in, but when you zoom in, you'll be able to see a bit more detail. So, oh, can you tell me generally what you think about the 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 blood film features on low power, the, the, the general features of this power? So at this power, I can see there are many white cells, so the white cell count must be raised. Leukocytosis, I agree, there's a leukocytosis. Yes, absolutely. You can't really tell much more of this power. Hemoglobin levels look probably roughly normal, I think. Sometimes they can be, red cells can be a bit more spaced apart, alluding to anemia. But yeah, I think all you can tell this power is a leukocytosis. So we need to find out what the cells are. So if I zoom in a little bit more, hopefully we can tell what some of the cells are. So I'm just going to scan for a little bit, and hopefully Olga can spot some of these cells. So Olga, tell me what these two cells are here sitting next to each other. So these two look like neutrophils. Do you oh, think this... they look normal, normal neutrophils? Um, I would call them normal neutrophils, yeah. yes. So would I, I agree. Normal neutrophils. There we are. And another couple of normal neutrophils here as well. OK, fine. Let's find some other cells that should be there. Um, this is where we this is where we find out there aren't many cells that should be there. Um, let's just have a quick look at probably this one. What do you think about what that cell is there? So that uh, has a relatively large nucleus, not relatively, definitely large nucleus, and there is a nucleus as well. Um, I would be suspicious it could be a blast. Um, I would look around more uh, because my other thought would be, is it a lymphocyte? Like yeah, a... I, I think just because I can't find as many normal lymphocytes, I think this is the closest thing I found, and that's small scale. I think it's a bit too small to be a proper blast, and we'll see in some of the other features, it doesn't quite fit in, but I think that's probably just a normal lymphocyte. It, there aren't very many normal lymphocytes for me to, to spot. So, oh, there we are, there's a nice one. Just so we can get that in context. Normal yes, there that's we are. That's, round what, that's what I was trying to show. Okay, <laughs> so we've got some normal lymphocytes and quite, a, quite an increased, but normal looking uh, neutrophils. Okay, fine. So let's move on to some of the other cells, shall we? There are quite a lot of other cells here. So what, what, how would you describe this cell here? So this cell has an um, average size and there is a nucleus which looks oval shaped. Uh, so my thoughts would be maybe it's a myelocyte um, with the granules in the cytoplasm. There we are, another one there, similar sort of properties. You're right. Um, it's not, obviously more open chromatin than the normal neutrophil, but I don't think the, the classic very open lacy chromatin you'd see in the blast. There's an abundant cytoplasm full of granules. Um, I agree, this is a myelocyte, and there we are. There's another three myelocytes there, at slightly different stages of maturation, but there are three different myelocytes. There's obviously a stage in granulocytic maturation in between neutrophil and myelocyte, called metamyelocyte, and we're not seeing very many of those there. So you can almost be forgiven to say that there's a, a twin peak of neutrophils and myelocytes in this case. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. a, twi a twin peak, so basically, when you're doing a differential um, in the bone marrow or in the blood, uh, you expect to see the most number of neutrophils followed by metamyelocytes, followed by myelocytes, followed by promyelocytes as you get to more immature. Um, in certain conditions, which we'll come to the answer in a minute, um, there is more myelocytes than metamyelocytes, but there's still lots of neutrophils. So you get a sort of peak in your, your, your maturation of your granulocytes at two, at two different peaks, at the neutrophil and the myelocyte stage. And then we come across, there's quite a lot of these cells here. Now, what do you think these cells are? Oh, there's another one there. So these have really dark uh, purple um, stained granules. They look like basophils. They have these very characteristic um, granules, which are really dark and almost obscure the nuclei. Absolutely. And as you can see, it doesn't take me very long to find lots and lots of these basophils. And 
how many beta deals should you see in a normal blood film? Not very many, maybe one or two of the whole blood film. As soon as you see more than that, your, your, uh, your eyes might prick with interest and go, oh, what is going on here? So um, in terms of what other features do we have, I think the platelet count, we haven't really talked about the red cells and platelets. There is quite a lot of platelets here. Is it increased? Possibly, possibly not. Um, and the red cells look mainly normal. There's a bit of poikilocytosis. I saw the odd sort of thinking about being a teardrop cell here. Um, there's, there's another one there. But but largely not much to say about the red cells, but with those white cell features, um, I think this is a, a classic example of a, of a diagnosis that comes up quite a lot. So I'll just summarise the features. Leukocytosis with neutrophilia and excess myelocytes. Um, there's a basophilia. Um, what we haven't seen much is eosinophilia. Um, in this case, um, it, we can't see it, but there definitely occurs in most cases of this disease. So, Olga, what is the answer? What is, what, what's wrong with this patient? So we made it very characteristic for um, CML, so chronic myeloid leukemia, which is a myeloproliferative neoplasm. I think um, we can say it looks like a myeloproliferative neoplasm, most likely CML, but we would have to confirm further what subtype of MPN it is. And, and how would you like to confirm that this patient has got CML? So we would send cytogenetics to look for the characteristic BCR able uh, 922 translocation. Yeah, absolutely. So three ways of detecting the typical BCR able translocation you get in CML. Um, quickest and easiest actually is by fish. If you want something to know quickly, you can know in a day or two uh, with fluorescence in situ hybridization. You can do conventional gene banded cytogenetics, but that will miss some cryptic translocations. And you should always do um, molecular PCR test to uh, find the exact transcript type in CML as well. But yeah, that's it. This is a nice case of CML. And what I will just quickly show um, is um, another case which I found how different CML can look. So this is also a case of CML. This has got a much higher white cell count. This white cell count is probably about 500, I think. As you can see, lots and lots of neutrophils like we saw before. It's a different stain this time, but this is a good example of lots of eosinophils. So eosinophils are these ones with orangey, there's an eosinophilic myelocyte, and this orange uh, granulation, we classically find the eosinophils, and they aren't too uh, hard to spot. So there's another one there, eosinophil over on the left there. Uh, there's another eosinophilic myelocyte. But this is just so you what, what can be seen there as well actually presenting with a very, very high white cell count is not uncommon. OK, so that's, that's the, the first case I was going to show you. And now let me move on to the second case. I just wanted to ask you, because when you start um, as a registrar, you keep thinking about what is a blast, what isn't a blast. Yep. And um, the, the, all the nuclei sometimes look very large and you can see these nucleoli, which these are the holes in the nucleus. Uh, do you think, is this a very hard sign to say something is a blast or should we uh, be mindful that maybe other cells like a myelocyte could have nucleoli or more mature yeah, forms? Absolutely. And it can be, it can be tricky. It can be tricky to decide what is a blast and it's not. And and the best thing is is to look at look, lots and lots of blood films. That would always be my my tip to any new ST3 is exposure to as much as you can. Once you've seen what everyone has, has made, the, the, not the mistake, everyone has, has looked at a paediatric film, especially because reactive lymphocytes in paediatric blood films could look really like blasts. And everyone's got, oh, my God, they've got ALL, send it to me in a few typing, and it's completely normal. I think it's almost a right passage for any registrar to do that because what, once you've but once you've seen enough of reactive reactive lymphocytes with nucleosis, especially in younger people, once you've seen enough other cells knocking around in the blood film, you get a feel of what what really is a blast and what is not. And in the end, if you're not sure, then there's always someone else to ask, and um, there's always there's always other tests you can do to find out what those cells are. Perfect, thanks, Guy. Um, so. Uh, with that in mind, should we proceed to the next case? So again, if I zoom into sort of low power. Yes. What, what are you thinking of at low power? So there is some uh, relative leukocytosis here as well. Um, not quite as high as the last one. Or not, certainly not no. the second one we showed you, but the, 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 the last main case here, not quite as high. Yeah. Yes. Um, I can't tell much more uh, from this uh, magnification. I would also say that maybe with the IFA, it's difficult because 
slides are spread differently in different places, but there is bigger gaps between the red cells indicating there's probably a bit more anemic, this patient. If I zoom in and just while we're talking about the red cells and the platelets look a little bit low to me, there are some larger ones here, but they are not quite as many platelets as there were on the last, uh, the last one. So we're looking at what these white cells are. So as I say, we had sort of lots of neutrophils there before in the last case. Here we've got a neutrophil here and another neutrophil here, but actually most of the cells here aren't neutrophils. Would you agree? Yes, most of the cells uh, have larger nuclei. They don't look like neutrophils. So I'm just going to show you these couple of cells there. What do you think of those cells? Uh, so these couple of cells here are quite large and they have large nuclei compared to the cytoplasm. Uh, again, they look like um, lay the chromatin looks more lacy and um, the cytoplasm is quite blue. Not that many granules that I can see. Um, I would say these cells, I would suspect they are blasts. So definitely look around to see they look like blasts. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I agree as well. So the other thing that we can tell on this one here, you can see not granules, but maybe you can see a little, little line. I don't know how well it's projecting on your screen, but there are almost three little lines running across there. Right, yes, there are some very fine lines. I'm going to come to a better example in. of that when I can find one. Yeah. Um, you can still see there's one on that one there. If I keep skirting on, there are definitely better examples of them on this slide. Let me keep going. Sometimes you have yes. to really convince yourself and believe that you can see the line because it's there, but it's very fine. <laughs> You're right, they are quite basophilic, they are quite blue, the cytoplasm, these larger cells, but the, the chromatin is very open um, and lacy, as you say. That's probably a nucleolus on this one there with a the very high NC ratio, nucleus cytoplasmic ratio. And then I'm going to find some more of those little lines. That's just okay. another nice example of a nice nucleolus which is sitting in the, uh, in the middle of that nucleus. Um, but there are definitely there are definitely better examples of the arrows than the one I stumbled across. Why can't I not, why can't I not find them now? There but in the first see, one, yes, there were some fine. Oh, that's one there, a little poking out there. Little yes. Little rods, yeah. But the, the thing is, these cells that we're talking about here, they're not exactly few and far between. You can see plenty of them. Lots and lots of them, really. Um, and I'm going to keep hunting around for some nice, nice looking out. Oh, there's another one there. Yes. It's quite fine looking, very fine arrow rods. But yes. So, oh, and because we hadn't seen it on the last, um, the last case, but we certainly could have done. What, what's this here? So this one looks like a nucleated red cell. But yes, it, it is a nucleated red. It, it, it basically means the marrow is something's going on in the marrow either it's working really hard to produce lots of red blood cells or there's something else in the marrow which is pushing these image immature red cells out um, because they shouldn't be seen in health um, but yes as soon as you have um, myeloid cells presumably these are myeloid cells because they're they're uh, they've got arrow rods and a, and a, and a nucleated red cell how would you how would you describe that blood film that we are? Nice so we call it a leukoerythroblastic blood, uh, blood film because we can see uh, white cell blasts, but also um, erythroblasts. Uh, yeah. That's a very nice big blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I don't think that could be confused for anything else, really. You've got very open chromatin. You've got a, you've got a prominent nucleolus here. You've got a, quite a lot of cytoplasm. Some, some blasts have less cytoplasm, but then you have these also got a nice little arrow rod sitting in there as well. So with so many of these, uh, your, your diagnosis there for Olga is? Acute leukemia, and it is acute myeloid leukemia, we can say after so many hour odds that we have seen. Um, are we able to say this just from the blood? I think so. I think you'd be pretty confident um, of, of calling it AML based on the, the presence of hour odds. But the test you would do now for this patient? So the first test we would do is um, immunophenotyping, uh, which can help us confirm the diagnosis. Um, and then obviously we have to do the bone marrow. Uh, but uh, as you told us a couple of days ago, we would just do the immunophenotyping on the bone marrow. So we have to do a bone marrow aspirate straight away. I mean, you, you can if, if it's if it's Thursday, like, oh my God, I need the result before the weekend. You can flow the blood if you think it's good. But we know this is AML pretty much from the morphology. You're going to need to do a bone marrow biopsy on most patients with AML unless there's a contraindication. Um, you're going to need to do immunophenotyping on, on, on that to determine 
the, it's definitely ML and all the genomic tests on the bone marrow. Just no point in doing it twice if you don't need to, but plenty of people will flow this anyway. So, but the, the immunity exam will tell you that these are myeloid blasts. Yes. Okay, good. If you move on to the third case. Okay, right. So again, low power. What's what's the general impression? Again, we can see there is leukocytosis um, uh, quite high this time compared to the previous one. Yep. And again, I think even more so in the last one, there is more anemia, I think, as well. I think they are more spaced out, these red cells. Um, luckily, we have automated machines which tell you haemoglobin, which means you don't need to know from a, from, a, from a blood film, but you get an impression that there is anemia as well. OK, so we're going to scan down at some of these cells. So, so tell me what you think about these cells here. I'm just going to point out these ones here. What do, you, what do you think of those? So the nuclei look like uh, they're neutrophils, um, but they're slightly less lobated compared to the normal neutrophils, and the cytoplasma looks slightly more pale. Obviously, the whole film looks more pale, so sometimes it's the staining yep. characteristics, but still, despite that, they look paler. I think it's fine. I think, I think you're right. These are neutrophils, but they are abnormally lobated as well. So they're, they're all slightly differently lobated as well. This one might have almost like a little curly, curly G, uh, backwards G. This one is just sort of like a upside down snowman. It's, there's some odd shapes that you're getting in here, which is not what you'd expect to see. And there's some, uh, there is some nuclear evacuation, um, some cytoplasmic vacuoles in, in these neutrophils as well. Actually, vacuolation of the neutrophils is more common as a reactive feature when someone's got an infection. Um, but coupled with the, uh, the, the atypia of the neutrophils, that I would call these relatively confident. I mean, look at this one here, bilobed largely. I mean, it looks like someone's writing do or do, sorry, <laughs> in there. So the, the, these are, and this one is extremely abnormally elevated with almost no granulation. So I describe these as dysplastic neutrophils. I think there's clear evidence of dysplasia in these neutrophils. OK, fine. So let's have a look at some of the other cells, shall we? What, what do you think this cell is here? Uh, so this one looks like a monocyte. I say that because it's very vacuolated um, and the nucleus is lobated in a way similar to a monocyte, so slightly lobated. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the classic nucleus of a monocyte is a pair of um, aviator glasses. This is not quite right because it's slightly abnormal monocyte, but yes, it's got a basophilic cytoplasm. Tends to not have granules in, but does have vacuolation even in in normal normal health. So yes, the, that is a that is a, a monocyte. Um, let's move on. This is another monocyte again, slightly abnormal looking monocyte, but the bluish cytoplasm tends to be large in neutrophils and with vacuolation as well. So again, abnormal monocyte. There's another large abnormal monocyte. But there are plenty of monocytes as well. We, we haven't, haven't had to look very hard to find these abnormal monocytes. There's another one here. You can see it next to the neutrophil there. Neither of these are normal cells. They are abnormally elevated, but you can tell the difference in the cytoplasm between the neutrophil, the abnormal neutrophil, and the abnormal monocyte. Both have a little bit of vacuolation, but it's that bluish sort of purpley colour, whereas so you've got the, the, the purple granules of the, uh, of the neutrophil. Yes, they okay. do look scaringly similar, though. I just wanted to ask you something. If it was a reactive film, can you still see some dysplastic changes in the neutrophils? Um, yes, you can see some abnormal elevation issues. I suggest that what you can see on this film is too much to just be reactive. I mean, it, there are there are some strikingly abnormal, and you wouldn't see those hypo granular forms as well in a reactive feature. They'd all be hypo granular, basically. Well, some of them are happening here, but but not all of them for certain. OK, so let's move on to some of the other cells here. So what do we think is this cell is here? Uh, these cells look quite large um, nucleus. So this one could be a myelocyte. Um, I, think, I think I agree. I think this one's a myelocyte. Yep. And this um, one? But the one next to it looks larger, so it could be either a blast or a promyelocyte, but we don't see the Golgi zone. Yeah, it, I, I think you're, I think this is a promyelocyte just because of the way the granules, there's a, quite a lot of cytoplasm, much more than expect in a, in a typical blast. Uh, you don't have the classic Golgi zone, but we've already decided there's abnormal uh, granular paresis here. This is a slightly abnormal promyelocyte. So, and again, we don't have to go very far to find abnormal myelocytes. Here, that's probably a metamyelocyte actually. So you can almost imagine that this abnormal 
myelocyte here is then turned into this slightly more pro myelocyte. It looks like it's about to get levation until it turns into one of these neutrophils. Again, you're not seeing normal maturation here, so you're not seeing a, a normal pattern. And then we've got a few of these little little fellas here as well, haven't we? Yes, with these ones are blasts, aren't they? Yeah, they are blasts. I mean, this is a lo lovely example here of, um, again, we've got a basophilic cytoplasm with a little bit of vacuolation and a nice, look at that prominent nucleus right in the middle. So I would call that, well, what would you call that, Olga? What kind of cell would you call that specifically? Blast, yes. Anything more specific? It reminds me of a monocyte, so we could say it's a monoblast. I, I agree entirely. Yes, it does remind me of a monocyte. With that, similar to when we've got any monocytes lurking around on this film, yeah, a little bit like the cytoplasm of this one. But again, we've got that much more immature nucleus. So this is a monoblast. You're absolutely right, a monoblast. Oh yeah, there's another promyelocyte that's uh, found its way into here as well. And there are blasts. Are there more than 20% blasts? I don't think so. Um, based on morphology, um, if you're going to call something acute myeloid leukemia, you need to have 20% blast. I'm not sure there are 20% blasts in this, but what do, what do you, oh, no, sorry, we found this, a nucleated red blood cell as well. There's, and also looking quite like an abnormal nucleated red cell as well. But I'm not going to go into NLBC morphology, otherwise uh, you'll get lost. So <laughs> um, there we are, some, some, lots of abnormal maturation of the granulopoiesis and lots of abnormal monocytes. What do you think is the probable diagnosis in this patient? So we said there are dysplastic changes, so it's yep. going to be one of the myelodysplastic neoplasms. And with erased monocytes, I would look at the count as well, but it could be um, CMML, which is chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. Um, and there are some subtypes depending on your blast percentage, I guess. Indeed, indeed. So you can categorise... Uh, CMML by whether it's proliferative or, or dysplastic type CMML because it is a MDS MPN overlap syndrome so it's got proliferative features and dysplastic features I mean you can't I would like to say you can't really make a diagnosis of CMML on a blood film but this is this is CMML so, someone had a bone marrow it was diagnosed with CMML these are the features that we see here could be almost nothing but and well unless it was AML in the bone marrow more than 20% blast but yes these are the classic features of uh, CMML in the, in the blood. There we are, another abnormal um, nucleated red cell. And also what we have seen as well is quite a lot of polychromasia as well. So these purplish cells here. Again, I'm not going to labour on the, the red cell morphology, but there we are, lots of polychromasia along with those nucleated reds. OK, so that was case three. And then case four, moving to the last case. OK, so we've got... Again, low power, having a look at low power. Again, there is leukocytosis. There's a pattern today. <laughs> indeed, um, indeed. Leukocytosis. And again, probably anemia as well, I think. And I think in this one, especially, you're getting a bit more marked thrombocytopenia, I would suggest. There aren't a lot of platelets knocking around. So this is, I have to find this hasn't scanned quite as well. I've got to find where the cells are in focus a bit more. Yeah, That's not too bad though, isn't it? Okay, things, so yes. describe some of these cells that you're seeing here. Um, so we see three cells here in the middle. They're all um, more, so the nuclei are uh, lacy. The chromatin is lacy, so the, uh, there's open chromatin. They are, they are granular. They look more basophilic, but also they do have pink azurophilic granules as well. So they're just yep. definitely granular. Some of them are bilobed. Um, so the one there you're pointing to is bilobed. This one almost looks like a set of buttocks almost, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, you know, there is low platelets, um, thrombocytopenia, and these bilobed granular blast oh. Looking cells. Nice thing should... with multiple nuclei, mm. like a little bit of granules hidden in that sort of almost golgy type thing. Yes, lots of abnormal libation. Oh, there's another nucleated red we spotted there. And again, a nice bilobed one here. You can almost see the two lobes overlying each other. And depending on the orientation, some of these abnormal cells can also look like they've got single lobes, but it depends how where they're lying um, in conjunction with each other. Again, look at this one. This one is, I would describe as hypergranular. Look at all those granules that are going around there. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so Olga, you, is this going to make you uh, get up in the middle of the night and do something for this patient? It definitely should, yes, because it looks like it's um, acute promyelocytic leukemia. So all of these are abnormal promyelocytes. So we should definitely um, work it out as an emergency and start treatment with ATRA straight away. Absolutely. So yeah, this is the, the classic features of um, APML blast. You can, abnormal promyelocytes blast. A, a, again, I think technically, because it's AML, a form of, they are blast, but yeah, they don't. They don't look like the typical blast that we saw in the second case. They also don't look like those abnormal promyelocytes we saw in the third case, those sort of large ones with a lot of cytoplasm. They had lots of granules too, but not the sort of dense granulation with the bilonucleus that we'd see in APML. And also very few normal neutrophils again in this one, um, which is what you expect because essentially these are, these are because of the um, uh, genomic aberration, these are stuck at the, the this sort of pro minor state, so this abnormal pro minor state stage. So, so Olga, what is the uh, the test that you'd like to do on this to confirm your diagnosis? So again, uh, what we want to do, obviously, we start treatment before confirming, but we want to do FIS for the PML RARA translocation to confirm whether it's um, APML. A absolutely, and you need to tell the lab wherever the lab is that you think they might have APML because they'll do fish pretty quickly, often same day within within a few hours, they can do the fish to to find the uh, PML RARA translocation. In 97% of cases, it's PML RARA. There are other um, variant translocations of, of RARA that you can get, but they're much rarer. But basically PML RARA, get out of bed. Patient is probably going to be in DIC because this abnormal granulation causes DIC in patients. They'll have abnormal clotting, they'll have low platelets. As you can see in this film, where are the platelets? There, there's barely any in this field at all that we can see. So they need top up of uh, often cryoprecipitate FFP and platelets to, to keep them at safe levels because they can bleed to death. Um, and they need um, uh, rapid treatment with, um, uh, with the retinoic acid, which differentiates um, these cells uh, into neutrophils effectively or into more mature granulocytes. But beware of uh, differentiation syndrome, which can also be life threatening in some patients. Definitely. And do you think, I mean, that was quite clear cut uh, uh, promyelocytes with uh, many granules, but yep. sometimes it's quite difficult to, to say these are promyelocytes. So do you have any tips on or things to look at specifically for APML? How do they look usually when there are no granules? Um, um, the, the, the key differential is AML with NPM1 mutation because often you get a cupped nucleus and they can look a little bit like a bilobe nucleus and and sometimes morphologically it's difficult to tell the difference. Basically, so look at see, the nucleus. Okay. Yeah, if you're seeing if you're seeing bilobe nuclei have a very high suspicion. If you're seeing hypergranulation also have a high suspicion. If you've got both, you can probably put your hat on it. That, that's the way I would think about it. The other thing to mention is that this is quite a high count for a classical APML. Classical APMLs have a pancytopenia, often have a white cell count, total white cell count less than one. So if someone comes in with pancytopenia, with a coagulopathy, with particular platelets and is sick, have a real good look around those film for any of these blasts that are lurking around there, because there might not be as many as there are here. Um, if the patient has a high count, it's more likely to be the APL variant, which is the it's the micro granular. So it just has it just has it has granules, the the APML variants, but they are uh, small that they, you can't see them under the microscope. So they look a granular, but they still have granules and they still have all the same properties of APML. But they often present with a high white count. Perfect. So it could still be APML even without granules. So have a very high index of suspicion and, you know, pancytopenia, abnormal nuclei. Okay. Ring a bell. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Guy.